Nintendo's franchises consist of one of the most iconic characters in video game landscape and even though if you're not a fan of Mario, Link or even Captain Falcon, you at least heard about them once. Kirby in particular houses a plethora of charismatic figures among the cast of whimsical creatures, some of them quite manic, others simply tragic. It's no wonder even the creators love to pay attention to almost 90% of the cast and regularly brings back seemingly forgotten fan favorites from time to time, be it in-game or on charming promotional material. A behavior many fans would like to see at other series as well, but even the developers of Kirby cannot pay attention to absolutely every niche appearance from the past. To this day, some actual popular characters wait until the spotlight shines on them once again, which is why it would be interesting to examine five underused players in the franchise in order to deflect obscure, irrelevant one-timers like some smaller foes people are not even aware of. I instead want to focus mainly on bosses that every fan should probably know. With that being said, here are five underused Kirby characters that deserve to come back. The Heavy Lobster is one of the many mechanical obstacles on Meta Knight's cold ship, the Halberd, but stands out as one of the most memorable bosses in the series despite only appearing for a couple of minutes without having any significant role in the narrative. This weapon resembles a lobster-like robotic defense system and chases Kirby more than once to fend him off the halberd. After a handful encounters it's finally time to face the seemingly undestroyable monstrosity and ultimately destroy the halberd's strongest shield. The boss fight itself is nothing the series haven't seen on paper. You simply dodge some easily avoidable attacks and watch out not to get overrun. A charming easter egg can be found when inhaling one of his strange substances, revealing a secret paint ability, thus making the battle much easier. It's even referenced as an example in one of Star Allies concept arts, used as inspiration for the feature of Inflaming Wispy. Still, it's more the presence of the giant lobster that radiates such a menacing aura, although lacking any kind of expressions. Normally, most Kirby enemies tend to display at least some feelings, often to plainly indicate another phase is going to start. Heavy Lobster, however, remains more stoic than Wispy Woods and the only things you will remember are the heavy, iconic iconic steps each time the robot lifts his leg. For some reason, the combination of the amazingly animated body and sound design works to such a degree that the soundtrack feels empty without the sound effects. Speaking of soundtracks, the Heavy Lobster theme follows a similar simplistic approach by being quite monotonous in melody variety but all the more memorable nonetheless. It carries a sharp sense of urgency, conveying the feeling an emotionless steamroll destroys everything on its path, no matter where you flee. An interesting detail many people are not aware of of is the fact that Heavy Lobster did not have a unique theme in the original Kirby Superstar. The remake decided to implement a special track, defining the robot's status even further. The same can be said about its design being quite detailed for a Kirby enemy but still matching the clarity of most characters in the series. It's actually quite weird how often the creators reference the Heavy Lobster on multiple opportunities, yet never bringing it properly back. Planet Robobot obviously completely missed the chance to make use of the this utmost perfect fit, but for now the only times Heavy Lobster appeared was naturally in Kirby Superstar and its remake, during a minigame and mass attack and the animation show. Now that Kirby finally entered the third dimension it would be flabbergasting to see how the mechanical lobster could be translated in 3D and going by the fantastic animations of the Forgotten Land there is no doubt Heavy Lobster would make a great return. The primary antagonists and passionate thieves, the Squeak Squad, responsible for the DS entry Kirby Squeak Squad. When Kirby's lovely strawberry shortcake was stolen and after being trapped in Dreamland's underground field, a constant race for a mysterious treasure box starts against the clever criminals. Being placed in the title of the game, the Squeak Squad regularly appears throughout the game in order to steal your items or sometimes even as the main bosses. Their group consists of different talents with particular specialities like immense strength, versatile agility or a high-end genius. The top 
top of the head, Da Roach commands his team and is more than capable by himself. Although this title is fairly controversial among players and didn't convince everyone for being the first main representative on Nintendo's iconic double screen handheld, the mice left enough of an impression to regularly appear and even being highlighted as a partner and star allies. This is why it might come across as confusing to implement one of Kirby's most well-known band of characters in this list, but don't forget, we are talking about proper occurrences. Having the opportunity to implement the squad as proper chess figures in another game didn't happen since their debut. And besides, despite the fact that Roach and his followers are quite recognizable and reappearing in the series, I have the feeling they also somewhat portray the most memorable yet left out characters in the franchise. The only moment they showed up again in a more or less meaningful manner was in Mass Attack as a guide. A dandy attendance indeed, but nothing to be hyped about. I'm not saying they should be the rivals in another title again, but it would be no problem to use the group as a mere obstacle for something greater. Every member offers unique scenarios for appealing gameplay moments, or imagine an all-out boss fight against every commander of the squad. It's pretty clear the gang holds no evil purposes per se, as treasures are the only thing to keep their interest, so it would be perfect to place them in a position of a chaotic third party. Take the Great Cave Offensive of Kirby Superstar for example, where you have to find all sorts of opulences in one connected area. A setup like that offers itself greatly for my proposition and what sounds more interesting than the greatest treasure hunt against the greatest pilferers of dreamland. The mighty bird, proud as well as protective mother and kinda forgotten wing of steel, Dynablade needs to cross dreamland's horizon one more time. Just like the squeak squad, Dynablade is not necessarily an antagonistic character as she only defends what is dear to her. This this becomes especially apparent in the animation show where it's more than clear that she will never start a fight on her own but will absolutely mess with you the second you come too close to one of her children. The powerful shielding behavior is perfectly encapsulated in her design, nearly resembling an armor made of rainbows but all the more dangerous. I particularly enjoy how Dynablade is shown to be extremely mighty to an extent that even Kirby is not able to beat her in the show once and always has to navigate around to win. Her initial boss fight takes place during the first half of Superstar, hence offering a rather mild challenge for beginners. The only weak spot to target is her head, while dodging fiery projectiles or freeing yourself from a swift claw swipe. The same could be said about Dynablade's performance in Air Raid, where she rarely appears as a giant hazard amidst the city. Striking her head is the only way to damage her, a charming callback to Superstar's strategy of winning. The reason why this mighty bird deserves another return is naturally built on nostalgia, but but even so, she felt like a staple in the series and unfortunately only pops up as an easter egg in modern titles. Dark Matter as such is plausibly one of the most memorable antagonists in the series, despite being absent for such a long time. It shaped the evil force for a couple of early titles and appears in different variations. For this list, I'm going to leave behind the standard for Miracle Matter or Zero and instead focus on the final boss of Kirby's Dreamland 2, which I will be calling Dark Matter Knight. Many fans would like to see another incarnation of Zero due to the strong atmosphere he would most likely bring to the table, but to be completely honest, I have nothing against the idea of only using Zero as the occasional easter egg from time to time. His mysterious nature adds to the unknown background of his being and doesn't come off as something to recycle again and again. His impact as a boss was quite heavy in 64, and I think it would be the right choice to let the mystery remain a mystery. Dark Matter Knight, how Oh, this name is so stupid actually, already made a comeback in Planet Robobot, then rightfully clashed his blade with Meta Knight. This was the first taste of how Dark Meta Knight would be translated into a modern game and without any shmup gimmick, which fantastically and definitely deserves another return. One way to make such a second approach worth would be an action-packed scenario where countless Dark Meta Knights emerge, building an army to fend off. The Dark Knight might be the somewhat true form of a normal Dark Meta unit, but he also strikes the perfect balance of being reproducible, proved by the fact Stardream did the very 
same thing in Planet Robobot. The last character on this list was quite recognizable back in the day but seemed to run out of paint and still waits for a return since then. The Paint Roller is a small being with the talent of creating living art. A somewhat modern representative might be Paintra from Triple Deluxe or talking about allies Adeline from 64 but Paint Roller was the original artist among Kirby bosses and definitely deserves to come back. His design might be more on the simpler side but the ability to fabricate anything and use it against Kirby bears so much potential in terms of how to design a boss. Even if he doesn't return as a proper enemy it would be great to at least bring him back in the form of a mini game, most appropriately in connection to a somewhat artistic background. Another idea would be an artistry battle where both competitors have to draw a prescribed object and use against each other. For the longest time I asked for bosses to incorporate copy abilities in a more mandatory way into those battles by making them a requirement to win. It would be something like a dungeon item from Zelda but obviously you would inhale something during the fight and turn the tables, giving the staging a certain sense of flow. Besides, since the next mainline title will definitely be another 3D game and probably take place in Dreamland unlike the Forgotten Land, it would be the perfect opportunity to reuse some forgotten figures and bring new life into these kinda iconic Kirby characters. Admittedly, there's not a single clear reason to let Paintroller return other than nostalgia, something the series already heavily relies on, maybe a little too much, but just like with many other bosses on this list, we sadly never got a proper modern representation and for many players he would feel like an unknown personality. This is it for my top 5 Kirby bosses I would love to see come back. There are certainly a lot more characters, be it good or evil, that deserve another shot, but we should be thankful for how careful Hell treats the wide range of unique personalities in the series. For every new game it feels like there is at least one special comeback, and we can only wonder which forgotten all-star might return in the future.